Classify each triangle by angles and sides. If you want to classify a triangle by angles, you're looking at three words. If you see a 90 degree angle, it's considered a right triangle. If all of the angles are less than 90, it's acute, like me. And if one of the angles is greater than 90, it's obtuse. Now, if you're like, should it be all the angles are greater than 90? Look, if all three angles are greater than 90, you're going to have triangles with angles bigger than 180. That's not possible. Knock it off. Now, if I wanted to name these based off of the sides that it has, if all three sides are different, you're looking at scalene, okay? All three sides are different. If I give you a triangle where two of the sides are the same, it's isosceles. I'm always afraid I'm going to spell that wrong, but, you know, I'm a math teacher. Who cares? If all three sides are the same, like so, it's equilateral for equal sides. Equilateral. Equilateral. All right. So those are my three things. So let's take a look at what we have here. This first triangle right here, I have two sides that are the same, which tells me that it's isosceles. And one of my angles is a 90 degree angle. So it's isosceles and right. Yeah, there you go. No numbers needed for this one. For this one, I'm going to look at my sides first, and I see that side is different from that side, which is different from that side, so all the sides are different. If all the sides are different, that means we have a scalene triangle. Looking at all three angles, 57 degrees, 44 degrees, 79 degrees, all of these are less than 90, which tells me that it's a cute triangle. And last but not least, we have this triangle over here, where this side is different from that side, but oh, these two sides are exactly the same. So we have ourselves another isosceles. What makes this one different from this one is that angle is greater than 90 which means this triangle is obtuse. So the types of triangle that we didn't hit, we hit a right acute and obtuse, but we didn't hit an equilateral. And if you're thinking, well, equilateral and isosceles, isn't isosceles a type of equilateral or vice versa? There are many ways that you could name these, but this is as specific as we can get. Okay, so there you go. Find the measure of the missing angle. All right, so what do I have here? I have myself a triangle right here. The sides of these sides of the triangle just kind of keep on going forever. What can I do? What can I do? Well, I do know that the insides of a triangle, one, two, and we'll call you X, are going to add up to 180. So let me do that. 30 plus 20 plus, I'm calling it X, is going to equal 180. 30 plus 20 is 50, so 50 plus x equals 180 minus 50 minus 50. And that tells me that this angle right here, x, is 30 degrees or 130 degrees, which is what I meant to say. So let's get rid of x because x is just some arbitrary letter that I used. So if X is 130 degrees, how is that going to help me find this question mark? Well, this question mark is vertical from 130, which means this question mark is the same as 130. So the missing angle is going to be 130. So a lot of times when you're asked to find missing angles and it's not as straightforward as you want it to be, you have to kind of build like a puzzle until you get to what you want. And what I wanted was found by doing the interior angle sum formula, which is that guy, finding out that it's 130. And so this question mark vertical from it is also going to be 130. So that's my answer. Find the measure of the missing angle. All right. So let's see what I have. I have 155 
an exterior angle. I have 60 on the inside. You know what I can do? I don't have a ton of information, but I do know that 155 is attached to what we'll call X. And these two guys add up together to form a straight angle. In other words, they're supplementary, so they add up to 180. So I'm calling you X just for funsies. If I subtract 155 from both sides, X ends up being 25. So let's erase. I just found out that this guy is 25 degrees. Great. Now what I don't have is that question mark and I don't have enough information yet still to find out that question mark. Technically I do, I'm not gonna say that I do, I'm gonna pretend like I don't, that's for a later thing, but I'm gonna pretend that I don't know something called the exterior angle sum. And I'm just gonna deal with the fact that you're 25, you're 60, and this missing angle here is going to add up to 180. So let me write that out, 25, plus 60 plus, let's call it Y, is 180 degrees. That's the interior angle sum. If I combine these, that gives me 85. So 85 plus Y equals 180. If I subtract 85 from both sides, 180 minus 85 is 95. So Y equals 95. In this case, degrees. So let's erase U. Let's make you 95 degrees. So this question mark is now completely adjacent and supplement to that 95 degree angle. Supplement is a fancy word for that 95 and that question mark is just going to add up to 180 degrees, similar to what we did over here. So if I subtract 95, from both sides, subtract 95 from both sides, that gets me 85 degrees. Now we may have noticed that 85 degrees appeared in the green stuff over here, and that's why I whispered exterior angle sum. That's gonna be in a future video, but for this video, I pretended that that didn't exist, and I ended up with this question mark being 85 degrees. Find the measure of the missing angle. So the angle that I need to find is all the way the heck over here. So usually when I have to do a wacky problem like this, I'm dealing with the fact that I have triangles, triangles everywhere. That ends up dealing with 180 degrees. Uh, I have angles that are glued together to make straight lines, more 90 or 180 degrees. I looked at that, which is why I said 90 degrees. We've got a lot going on here. So let's kind of take what we have and start building pieces to a puzzle and work our way over here. All right, so I have 115 and this angle right here creating a straight angle. So what I do know is that if I were to add 115 and that angle right there, I'd get 180. So to find that, I'm going to subtract it, 115, from 180. I'm not showing all of my algebra steps. I'm using common sense here, and that gives me 65 degrees. So you are 65 degrees. Now, working my way from the left to the right, I can find out what this angle is by using the interior angle sum. In other words, 65 plus 85 plus, we'll call it X, is going to equal 180. So let's combine 65 and 85, that's gonna be 150, plus X equals 180. If I subtract 150, then X is 30, so X here is 30 degrees. Okay, so Still haven't gotten to my question mark, but again, I'm starting from the left and building my way to the right. Now, this whole thing, all three of these angles, this little red one, the right angle, and that guy right there are going to make a straight angle 180 degrees. So I'll call you Y, and I'll say that 30 plus this 90 degree angle right here plus Y is going to equal 180 degrees. 
Combine the 30 and the 90, and that's 120. So 120 plus y equals 180. Subtract 120 from both sides. Subtract 120 from both sides. And y is going to equal 60. So this guy right here is 60 degrees. Q. Still not at the question mark yet. So what color didn't I use yet? Purple. I can find this angle right here by the fact that these two guys add up to make 180. In other words, 180 minus 155 is going to give me 25, that chunk right there. So I have 60 here, I have 25 here. Oh, I have another inside of a triangle that I can find. So I know if I were to call you Z, that 60 plus 25 plus Z is going to equal 180 interior angle sum once again. 60 and 25 is 85. 85 plus Z equals 180. Subtract 85 from both sides. Subtract 85 from both sides. And that missing angle is going to be 95. So you are 95 degrees. Last but not least, last but not least, I'm going to do blue. I'm going to end with the color that I started out with. I'm finally able to figure out what my question mark is. My question mark is going to create a straight angle with 95. In other words, 180 minus 95 gets me my question mark. And so 180 minus 95 is 85 degrees. So it took a while, but it's just like building a puzzle with the fact that we know that two lines that are created, or two angles rather, that create a straight angle is 180, and the interior angles in a triangle is also 180. So lots of 180s, kind of like me changing my mind. Am I right? Because of the 180s? Like and subscribe. Find the measure of the missing angle. <sighs> missing angle's way over here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to build off of the knowledge that I have over here, essentially work my way left to right until I can answer that guy right there. 75 is vertical to this guy, making you... 75, not so bad. 45 is vertical to that guy, making you 45, not that bad. Now, no vertical here, no vertical here, but what I do have is this is the third angle in a triangle where I already have two of the angles. So if I were to pretend that you're called X, I can use the interior angle sum and do 45 plus 75 plus x equals 180. 45 plus 75 is 120. So 120 plus x is 180. If I were to subtract 120 from both sides, 180 minus 120 is 60. So this x down here is 60, 60 degrees. All right. That's 79. What can I do? It's not attached to a triangle. Oh, but you know what? You know what? 60 and 79 and this angle right here, I'll call you Y. All of these are glued together to create a straight line, which means 60 plus 79 plus Y all adds up to 180 degrees. So 60 plus 79 is 139, so plus y equals 180. Subtract 139, subtract 139, and y is going to equal 41. So you are 41 degrees. Now, if you're 41 and you're 68, then this guy right here, which I'll call Z, is going to be the missing angle 
of a triangle, which means 41 plus 68 plus Z all add up to 180 degrees interior angle sum. So one, so 41 plus 68 is 129 plus Z equals 180. Subtract 129, subtract 129, and Z is going to equal 51. So Z, let me erase that. Doesn't If you're wondering, like, why is he using X, Y, Z? Why those letters? doesn't really matter. In fact, I don't have any of those answers in my answer. I haven't even gotten to my answer yet. I'm just using X, Y, and Z to help fill in blanks. I haven't gotten to my answer yet until now because question mark and 51 are glued together to create a straight angle, which means 51 plus question mark is going to add up to 180. So if I subtract 51, subtract 51 from both sides, my question mark is going to be 129 degrees. So there you go. Uh, lots of puzzle building, lots of going from left to right to figure this guy out, but I figured it out because I'm a friggin' genius. Find the measure of the missing angle. All right, we are now going to pretend that we know the exterior angle sum. An exterior angle is an angle that is kind of like created from one of the lines of a triangle going a bit too far. So I know that the exterior angle is going to be the sum of the opposite interior angles. So whatever angle C is not attached to, you add these up, A plus B, and that gets you my exterior angle. Why is that important here? Well, because question mark is an exterior angle. And question mark is going to be the same as 35 plus 95. Because those are my interior angles that are not attached to the question mark. 35 plus 95 is 130. So my question mark is 130 degrees. And that's it. I'm done. Find the measure of the missing angle. All right, what I have here is an exterior angle. I know the exterior angle is equal to the sum of its opposite interior angles. So that's what I'm going to set up. I'm going to say my exterior angle, 18x plus 5, is going to equal the sum, 46, plus negative one plus eight X. Looks a little sloppy. Maybe should have put parentheses, but you know what? Too late, too late. I have 18 X plus five on the left. That hasn't changed yet. On the right, I have 46 plus negative one or 46 minus one, which is 45 plus eight X. Let's get rid of the X because I have an X on the right side and on the left side. So let's get rid of the one on the right side because I know that's going to make this a perfect 10 X, which is a sweet term. <laughs> 10 X is a type of sugar. Look it up. Also called confectionery sugar or confectioner's sugar. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't do carbs. So I have 10 X plus five equals 45 minus five minus five cross you out. 10x equals 40. Divide both sides by 10. And x equals 4. Now, the directions that I have say find the measure of the missing angle. I made this problem, and I think I just made a mistake. So I'm not going to find that measure there. You know what? I am. I created this mess. I have to fix this. So let's find out what this guy is right here. Let's find it out. Okay, uh, what do I know? I know that this guy is 18x plus 5, and that if I were to add these two guys up, they add up to make 180. So what I have is 18x, but you know what? X is 4. So 18 times 4 
plus 5 plus this question mark is going to equal 180. 18 times 4 is 72. 72 plus 5 plus, I don't know, equals 180. This makes 77. 77 plus, I don't know, equals 180. And if I subtract 77 from both sides, I'm out of room. Then the missing angle that I have is going to be 103 degrees. Now, some of you are like, why did you do it that way? Couldn't you say this plus this plus I don't know equals 180 and then plug in four for that? Yes, I could, but I didn't. There's two ways that you could do it. And once again, I think that was a typo that I said, find the missing the measure of the missing angle. I'm pretty sure that was from our previous problem and I didn't delete it, but I went with it because it was fun. I had a great time. I hope you did too. The answer is 103, which is two more Dalmatians than my favorite movie about Dalmatians. 101 Dalmatians. Subscribe to Disney Plus right now. Find the measure of angle YDC. YDC is this guy right here. Okay, so I have to find out what this angle measure is. It's 15X plus five, all right? Well, I don't know what X is. Ooh, but you know what? This is an exterior angle. These are opposite interior angles. And the exterior angle is always going to equal the sum of its opposite interior angles. In other words, 80 plus 6x plus 6. Now, I probably should have wrapped parentheses around 6x plus 6, but I know I won't need them, so I didn't. Fight me. The left side doesn't change. 15x plus 5 doesn't change. On the right side, I can combine 80 and 6 to make 86. And then I add 6x to that because that hasn't changed. Now I have a variable on the left and a variable on the right. Let's get rid of 6x because why not? I could subtract 15x from both sides, but this keeps things positive. And I'm a cheery guy, so I plan on doing that. Uh, 15x minus 6x is 9x. Drop down the plus 5. Drop down the equal sign. Drop down the 86. Let's subtract 5 from both sides. And I get myself a nice little 81. Perfect. Because my next step is to divide both sides by 9. Which tells me that x equals 9. Hooray, I'm done, right? No. Because my job is to find angle YDC. Angle YDC is given to us by 15x plus 5. It's not saying 5x. It's saying find out what x is then plug it into this guy, and the measure of angle YDC is going to equal that. So 15 times 9 plus 5 is going to be, I believe that's 135 plus 5, which is 140 degrees. Oh, man, cool beans. So I did it. I did it. Triangle BAC, baby got that, is congruent to triangle LMN. Okay, so here's pictures. Oh, it wants me to figure out what angle A is congruent to. Two ways that you could do this. Angle A is telling me that it has two little hoopy things, which matches up with that M over there, which also has two little hoopy things, which means angle A is congruent to angle M. The other way that you could figure this out is A is the second letter here, and M is also the second letter here. And the only way that you could say two triangles are congruent to each other is if you line them up the exact way that they're supposed to be lined up. So I can look at this and say that C and N are congruent, and B and L are congruent. Without looking at the pictures, I could tell you that side AC is congruent to MN, so on and so forth. But that's all we're doing here. I'm giving you two congruent triangles, and I'm saying, look, A corresponds to which one over there? M. That's it. I'm done. Write a statement that indicates that the triangles are congruent. So when you're writing out a congruency statement, you're going to say triangle blah is congruent to triangle blah. It's important that it doesn't matter which letter you start out with. So if I start out with D, 
I have to make sure that the order I put it in has the thing that corresponds to D. D has three lines attached to it. I guess that's an I has three lines attached to it. So D and I correspond to each other. So over here, if we pick a different letter, and it doesn't matter which letter that you pick, it doesn't matter the order if it's just a triangle. So if we go with C, C has two hoopy things attached to it. So does H. So C and H correspond to each other. Last but not least, I only have one letter at, uh, left, so I have B, which matches up with G, B, and G. And we can say that triangle DCB corresponds and is congruent to triangle IHG in that order. Now, the reality is we have an infinite amount of, not an infinite, like four or five ways that maybe six ways that we can write this out. I can write this out as CBD is congruent to HGI, or I could do BCD is congruent to GHI. As long as D matches up with I, C matches up with H, and B matches up with G, it's all good as long as you put things in the corresponding order. State if the two triangles are congruent, if so, how? So we are going to look at two methods of triangle congruence. We are either going to deal with SSS, and SSS says if I have three sides of a triangle here that match up with three sides of a triangle over there, then these guys are congruent, SSS. And I'm also going to look at SAS. This is where you have to be a little bit more careful. SAS says that if that side is congruent to that side, that side is congruent to that side, the angle in between, the included angle, has to be congruent too. Okay, SAS were the angle in between. So these are the two methods that we're going to look at. So I see a side matching up with the side. I see another side matching up with another side. And you might be thinking, um, that's two sides and I don't see any hoopy things for angles. Neither of them, incorrect. Don't forget about this included side right here, homie. A side is equal to itself. That's reflexive property. So this guy is SSS, or if you're a snake, my favorite geometry joke. So if you're thinking, oh, okay, I wonder if the same thing's going to happen here. Probably. We have a side matching up with the side. We have an angle matching up with an angle and the included side here. Side, angle in between, side, side, angle in between, side. This is SAS. Right. Over here, we have a side matching up with the side. We have an angle here matching up with an angle, and we have these two sides are the same. Now, before you get excited, this right here, side, angle, side, this one is not. This is angle, side, side, also known as, mm, you know what? I'm not going to write it out. But let, what I know is SAS is not the same as ASS. They're not the same. So are these two congruent? No. These two were yes. This is a no. There are many ways that you could tell triangle congruence. The curse word is not one of them. Not at all. State what additional information is required in order to know that the triangles are congruent for the given reason. So I need to prove that these two are congruent by SAS. SAS is called SAS because you have a side and an angle in between and a side. So if these two sides are congruent, the angle that I have to draw must be in between the two sides, the included angle. Similarly, GH and IH have to have H as my angle. So the information that you need is you need to show that angle L is congruent to angle H. Once I show that, I can say side, angle, side, side, angle, side. The two triangles are congruent. I'm done. State if the two triangles are congruent. If so, how? The two triangle congruencies we're going to look at is ASA and AA. S. Now, in a previous example, we did SSS and what was it? ASA? No, SAS. 
Okay, we'll do an ASA here. Also, ASA is a way that you can call your friend. <laughs> anyway, what does ASA look like? Well, if I give you two triangles, ASA means I have to show that these two angles are congruent, these two angles are congruent, and most importantly, the included side, the side in between those angles have to be congruent too. AAS says if I have two triangles, I can have an angle and an angle, an angle and an angle, but a side that is not in between be congruent. So the difference between ASA and AAS is the order of the letters, where ASA says the side is in between the angles and AAS says that the side is not in between the two angles. So what do I have here? I have these two angles are the same. I have these two angles are the same, but I don't have a side. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I do. It's the included side in between. These sides are the same exact side, which means they're equal. So I have angle, side, angle, A, S, A. What do I have over here? I have a side, I have a side, I have an angle, I have an angle. No other pictures. I don't have an included side. Oh, but you know what I have? Vertical angles. So I have angle, angle, not included side, angle, angle, not included side, A, A, S. All right, I have a side and a side. Uh, no angles, nothing's attached to each other. There's no right angle thing. I can't even prove anything. Are these two angles or triangles congruent? I don't know. But do I have enough information to say if they are or aren't? Nope. So these two guys are congruent. This guy is not because I only have two sides and nothing else. And I continue to ask my snake friends, is there a s one? And they said, no. It's a snake joke for you. Because of the two S's. But you have to be careful because there's SSS, which is S. But notice I didn't say S. I said S. Because two S's are shorter than three. Please watch these videos and comment and like. I'm trying as hard as I can here. State what additional information is required in order to know that the triangles are congruent for the reason given. All right, two triangles. I need to show that these guys are congruent by ASA. ASA, in this order, says that an angle and an angle must have a side in between. So angle, angle, I need that side in between. Angle, angle, I need that side in between. So in order for these guys to be congruent, I already have my two angles, but I need to show that side KL is congruent to side, I have to make sure I do it in order, UT. Now, a lot of you are like, why didn't you put TU and why did you put UT? Why did you stutter for a second there? Because K matches up with U and T matches up with L. I have to make sure I put it in order. But now I have enough information to prove that these two angles are congruent based on ASA because I made the side in between those two angles congruent. Done. State if the two triangles are congruent. If so, how? Right triangles, right triangles, right triangles. I have four right triangle congruence theorems, and those are HL, H A L A L L N L A. Good start. What does H L mean? H L means hypotenuse leg. If I give you two right triangles and I show you that one of the legs is congruent and the hypotenuse, I don't know, are congruent, that's enough information for me to say these two triangles are congruent to each other. H A says if I give you a right triangle, and I have an angle, and that matches up with a right triangle and an angle here, and the hypotenuse are congruent, that's enough information for me to say that these two are congruent by ha. It's a really funny theorem. LL, which is a really cool theorem, LL Cool J, the singer from the 90s, he's a rapper, says that if I have uh, two right triangles 
and I can show that that leg is the same as that leg and that leg is the same as that leg, I have enough information for me to say that these two guys are congruent. And LA, which is a city in California, if I have two right triangles and if I can show that one of my legs is congruent and one of my angles is congruent, then that's enough information there. So you might be looking at these and saying like, isn't that the same as like SAS? And isn't that the same as uh, AAS? Yeah, they pretty much are. It's just that we are making this now towards right triangles and I'm not gonna overthink it. So right triangle, angle, hypotenuse are the same. That's HA, okay? Angles, hypotenuses, right triangle, ha. Uh, what do we have here? We have a leg and a leg and a right triangle, but I have nothing else, do I? I do. These two legs are glued together. So we have LL, right triangle, LL, bean. Isn't that a thing? And then we have uh, H here, H here, L here, L here, right triangles, right triangles, HL. So the only one that I didn't do was LA, but you know, you guys get the idea. Those are my right triangles. Bada bing. State what additional information is required in order to know that the triangles are congruent for the given reason. I need to show that these two triangles are related by LL, cool J which is a rapper from the 90s. I made that joke in a previous video. I'm not gonna stop until I stop doing math for a living. I need to show that these two are congruent. Well, LL implies that these two guys are right triangles, which they are good. I have one leg and I have the other leg. So how can I show that these two triangles are congruent using LL? Should I choose these lines? No, because that's an H, hypotenuse. I'm gonna choose these two lines. So I need to prove that line CA that's my daughter coughing, there she goes again, is congruent to XV, there she goes again. Now I'm putting it in that order, C matches up with X and A matches up with V. You have to make sure that things are in order when you're writing out congruent statements. I did CA for cough and XV for, <laughs> but now I've proven that these two guys are congruent. There you go. Find the value of X. What do we have here? Well, these two angles are the same. Oh, if the angles are the same, that means this is an isosceles triangle and these two opposite sides are the same. These are called the base angles. Okay, and when the base angles are the same, that means their opposing sides are also going to be the same as each other. Long story short, X is six, I'm done. Now, Again, isosceles triangles say that if these two angles are the same, then these two sides are the same, which tells me that X is six, short and sweet. Find the value of X. All right, X is that guy right there. Ooh, this is equal to that, which means that this is an isosceles triangle and the base angles are going to equal each other. So you're 75 and you're thinking, well, that doesn't solve for X, does it? No, but what I do know is if that angle is 75 and that angle is 75, then X is the missing angle in a triangle. I can use the interior angle sum and say 75 plus 75 plus X equals 180. 75 plus 75 is 150. So 150 plus X equals 180. Subtract 150 from both sides, subtract 150 from both sides, cross you out, and X is gonna equal 30 or 30 degrees. It's very tempting to look at this and have exterior angle thoughts, which I guess is, no, not really possible. You don't wanna do that. They just added that line to throw you off a little bit. Don't be fooled, which I believe JLo once told you to do that. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. And I'm here to tell you, don't be fooled by the exterior angles that I've got. I'm still, I'm still Mr. Parrish from the block. Like and subscribe. 
Find the value of x. All right, so I'm starting out over here with a 120 and I'm ending up over here with an x. I have these two sides are the same. These two sides are the same. They look like they could be equilateral triangles, but what I know for a fact is this guy right here is isosceles. So I'll label that. You guys are the same as each other, okay? I'll deal with a similar fact over here, but I'm not there yet. What do I have? I have 120. Ooh, this is an exterior angle. An exterior angle is going to be the sum of the opposite interior angles inside the triangle. Now, I'm not gonna call this X because I'm supposed to find X. I'll call you Y. So 120 is the same as Y plus Y. So I'm going to set up an equation, Y plus Y, the sum of the interior angles, equals 120, or 2y equals 120. Divide both sides by 2, and y equals 60 degrees. Oh, look at that. And this is kind of nice, because since those guys are 60 degrees, that must mean that this third angle is also 60 degrees, so we do have an equilateral triangle. Will that help us answer the question? No. It's just a fun fact. Now, what can I do moving my way down here? I know that these two guys are the same, but what I also know is that 60 is vertical to this angle right here, making that 60. If these two sides are the same, then these two angles are the same, making you 60 degrees, making you 60 degrees, which doesn't matter, making you equilateral, which doesn't matter. And what does matter is the fact that X and 60 are vertical to each other, which means X is 60 degrees. So through the knowledge of isosceles and equilateral triangles, we were able to find out that this whole thing just was a bunch of equilateral triangles glued together and getting us 60 degrees for X. Find the value of x. All right, the measure of angle two is 13x plus three. There it is. And I have 146 way the heck down here. So I kind of have to make my way down to that. I'm pretty making my way downtown, but making my way from two to 146, that's a different story. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make my way up. I'm gonna move on up to the east side. So let's do this. What I know is this creates a 180 degree angle, okay? This glued to that makes supplementary angles. So I can say 180 minus 146 is 34 degrees. So this guy right here, let me clean that up, is 34 degrees, all right? What do I have here? I have myself an isosceles triangle, which means this angle and this angle are exactly the same 34 degrees, which means this is 34 degrees. Why? Because these guys are vertical. And since this is also isosceles, you're 34 degrees. So after all of that, what I know is angle two and 34 add up to make 180 degrees. So 13X, which is angle two plus three, plus 34 add up to make 180 degrees because they're supplementary. Combine like terms, that gets me 13x plus 37 equals 180. Subtract 37, subtract 37. 13x equals 143 divide by 13 divide by 13, and let's put it up here, x equals 11, not degrees. I shouldn't put degrees there. I shouldn't because x is just some number, and x equals 11. Very tricky. If you were to try to go from the top right to the bottom left, it would be an absolute nightmare. So I guess, you know, the what we want to do, the strategy is start with the number and then make our way towards our X, which in life, don't we want to make our way away from our X's? <laughs> Who's with me? <laughs>
uh, ex-girlfriends and boyfriends. Like and subscribe.